and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum, substituting for Chris Cooper. <laughs> Thank well, you, Chris, for doing the show the last two weeks. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Thank, Andy. Thank you, Anne. Good to be back. You've been on assignment in London. I have. Uh, I've uh, been reviewing theater and interviewing uh, Peter, Tatchell? Uh, Peter Tatchell over there. Okay. So we can talk about that. So we'll get some results uh, from your trip, a different point of view. But the Russian... Uh, Treatment of LGBT uh, citizens continues to dominate the news and debates over the Winter Olympics being held there and uh, do we boycott the games or move them or protest them or what else can we do to really help the people uh, of Russia who are suffering under a horrible regime? Are you a same-sex married couple living in a state that doesn't recognize your marriage? Well, the Social Security Administration is trying to figure out what to do uh, if one or the other of you uh, claims spousal benefits. Right now, they'll put you on hold. <laughs> but the Pentagon is going to go ahead and give full spousal benefits to members of the military who are in same-sex marriages, no matter where you live. And in fact, they're going to give you leave to go get married because they're not going to give them give you benefits if you are not, in fact, married. This month is the 50th anniversary of the 1963 Civil Rights March on Washington. Uh, and uh, the out gay organizer of that 63 march is going to get the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He's long dead. And an anti gay gospel singer is nixed from a memorial concert uh, connected with the commemorations. And another dead gay person is getting the Presidential Medal oh, yes. of Freedom, yes. too. Hey, you got to be dead it's because the they're afraid of what we're going to say. Well, this if year. If we're alive. Previous years that you could be alive. Oh, and uh, well, and I will review some theater from the West End in London and a new play in New York starring Randy Harrison of Queer as Folk fame. But well, this story about Russia, I mean, I come home and it's on the front page of the New York Times above the fold. It's getting very big. Very big. I haven't gotten up from my computer in a week. Uh, and here are all my notes on it. Uh, so It's we're not gonna... funny. It's scary. The whole thing is so scary and frightening in terms of what's going on for people over there in, in Russia. Well, we're actually going to get some first-person testimony on that next week because our friend Masha Gessen, who is a longtime journalist who we knew here 20, 25 years ago when she was living here and then moved back to Russia and has been there for 20 years and has a her female partner. They have three kids. They live in Moscow. And she's, she's getting out. She is leaving Russia because for the her, sake of the kids, because she might lose her kids, and because things are getting bad. I mean, and that's how bad it is, folks. Yeah. They're talking about taking away the children of gay people, particularly adopted children. And her oldest son, who is a teenager, is adopted, and she's afraid that they're going to come and, after him. And you know, she's a, a person who's at least connected and uh, has Extremely. English and all these other kinds of things. Uh, what about everybody else uh, who's left behind internationally? So Masha and two of her children are going to be right here on Gay USA next week for an extended interview uh, where they will tell us from their point of view what exactly is happening in Russia and what exactly we could be doing about it. And, but, and of course, the, the other thing that we're learning, and you know, we're, we're all focused a lot on the gay stuff and how bad the anti-gay law is, but how, what the context of this oh yeah. uh, for the Putin administration cracking down on dissent, I mean, they're just a human rights violator all over the place. What was the International Olympic Committee thinking when they had the Olympics there? Look, what were they thinking when they had the Olympics in Beijing four years ago? Or in Berlin in 1936. Uh, let's get to that in a second, uh, but because uh, I do want to discuss that. But the thing to remember about Russia is is that things are getting horrible there. Really, there seemed to be a time a few years ago when maybe things were loosening up a little. But when Putin retook power, and not very. Uh, uh, strongly in that he doesn't have complete uh, 
support the way he used to. Uh, his idea is to scapegoat us and others, uh, immigrants and uh, people of different nationalities. Dissenters. Uh, yes, uh, the opposition, uh, to shore up his strength. So all of these various groups get scapegoated with the help of the Russian Orthodox Church. And he then excites the populace so that 88% of them think it's a great idea to pass this law that we should be arrested, fined, deported, uh, locked up uh, for being uh, perverts who are, you know, shouldn't be allowed to live. Uh, so this is a whole campaign by Putin to shore up his own power. Uh, we become the victims of that. We've seen it in this country with the right-wing uh, conservatives. We've seen it in Africa with uh, Mugabe uh, trying to get reelected in Zimbabwe, which he just did by stealing the election, or in Uganda, or in lots of places well, around we did, the world. In the 1980s, we did pass laws in the United States Congress uh, to, to uh, uh, ban the promotion of homosexuality. We and, did, and in, the vote, in and the vote, And the vote was 98 to 2 in the Senate. And if you don't think that led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of gay people in the AIDS crisis, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. You know. And DOMA, right. hate legislation passed by the United States Congress by an overwhelming vote. And all the anti-marriage uh, amendments passed state by state by state over... Which the, targeted us as, uh, you know, as the people who were the problem in society. Right. So, so it, it's this not, is... It, and, and they did it in the United Kingdom as well under Margaret Thatcher, so it's, it's, it's everywhere. It is, and it's a, a long tradition. Uh, in fact, uh, let's get this in so we don't forget it. One thing that surfaced this week was someone dug up a news item from the New York Times in November of 1935. And what this news item talks about is the fact that uh, the uh, Hitler government is promising the international... The, the Fuhrer himself yes. was assuring the head of the International Olympic Committee, we'll take the, we'll take the anti-Jew signs down in the park around the Olympics, because they had the winter and the summer Olympics. I yes. didn't realize this. Yeah. Uh, well, they used to be held in the same year, and, uh, right. and then they split them up and put them in every two years. We'll take them down. Uh, and uh, the IOC uh, head... Uh, um, Oh, it was not promised that they would take down displays of Der Sturmer, which was the, the anti-Semitic newspaper, which was displayed by stormtroopers in towns all across the country. Mm -hmm. So they didn't get any assurances about that. But at the time, there were signs that said, Jews are forbidden to enter. Of course, we had white-only signs in those days in our country. Uh, the IOC had, had attacked... U.S. groups opposing American participation in the Berlin Games. Well, this games. is what's interesting to me, that there was a, in America and worldwide, there was a demand by activists not to hold the games activists, in Berlin. Activists, but not the Olympic committees. Those were just those political people. Yes. They were trying to politicize the games. Yet again. And the head of the IOC said, oh, this campaign against the games is based on lies. So we'll see what they Look, say about that. Even today, you hear people say, uh, the games must go on in Sochi, and we must send our athletes over there to win and, and display their uh, courage, just like we sent Jesse <laughs> Owens to Berlin in 1936. Yeah. And I would like to ask anyone who says that, what did that do to stop World War II and the Holocaust? Right, absolutely You nothing. think that we got something out of sending Jesse Owens well, in, and forbidding Jewish athletes to compete, by the way. In fact, there's a danger here that we will go to Sochi, that there will be no anti-gay incidents against uh, staff right. or, or athletes, right. and they'll say, what's the problem? And they'll yes. go back to beating the crap out of their own citizens exactly. over this issue. That's what happened in Germany. At and that's why it's important to focus on the fact that this is about the LGBT population of Russia and the immigrants and the uh, different ethnic groups and anyone else who's in opposition and being abused, uh, and not about the Olympics. The Olympics are just a convenient vehicle to raise these issues. They are not right. the point of the right. story. The Russian, uh, the, the Russian law is a violation of the Olympic Charter, if you want to put it that way. Oh, and I have put it that and way. And therefore, the game shouldn't be there. But, you well, know, and you the know, Russians shouldn't be competing. That's my you know, favorite thing. Some television, yeah, some, yeah, they should, they should make them a pariah nation. 
Uh, and again, where was the intercession when, you know, this is all happening long after they got the contract to do the Olympics? You know, where they said, if you, do, if you pull this stuff, you're, we're not going. Now, the These kid, laws started being passed in 2006. Yeah. Riazan, or however it's pronounced, R-Y-A-Z-A-N. Yeah. First law, 2006. If you watch Gay USA, you would know about this because <laughs> we reported on it. But not a word from the IOC, not a word from the USOC, not a word from any country about these laws being passed in relation to maybe we should take the Olympics away from them years ago when it would have been easier. Well, our organizing has been a little late too here, hasn't it? I mean, it's not that LGBT groups didn't raise issues about it, all out groups like that, international groups. But you know, here's the other thing. Russian officials are, are, are now being very defensive about this and saying, what the hell are you talking about? We've got rich, successful entertainers here who are gay. They live unmolested. You know, uh, this campaign is just being stirred up by, in the word they use, I don't know the Russian word, by perverts around the world. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. Um, Calm you, down, they say. But, Calm down. One thing confused me about the 1935 story. Yeah. It said that uh, there was also a non-participation movement in the Olympics by yeah. South Africa. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Well, the world turns. Uh, but the, uh, let's get to the news of what has happened okay. in the last week. Uh, certain, last week we told you that uh, President Obama had spoken out on, under grilling by Jay Leno on The Tonight <laughs> Show to say how offended he is by these laws. And then later in the week, he held a press conference in the, you know, one of his uh, occasional press conferences. And he got asked about this. And he, and he spoke about it overtly on his own. No one is more offended than I. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think so. I think there are a lot of people who are more offended than you. But, uh, you know, no boycott. We have to go there. The Russians will be weaker if they don't have gay and lesbian uh, athletes. And lots of other people are saying this. Oh, let's get the gay athletes to win and be on the stand and all that kind of stuff. Stuff and, but, <laughs> you know. Well, here's one interesting development. Right now in Moscow, they're holding the World Track and Field Championships. Now, let's remember, Sochi is the Winter Olympics. This is track and field, which is normally part of the Summer Olympics. But we are in the summer, and this is the World Championships. So those athletes have been asked about this, too. And there's this U.S. runner named Nick Simmons. We've got a uh, picture of him. Yeah, and uh, he ha he's been, he's straight, but he's been identified as an ally of LGBT people. And so he was asked there before he, he went, uh, you know, what are you going to do about this? And he said, well, you know, I would never be rude to a host country. I would compete. I would shake their hands. I would thank them for being good hosts. I would beat the hell out of them. And then I would go home and, and tell the LGBT friends that I competed for them. So, do you know, people came down on him a little. But he goes to Russia, he competes, he wins a silver medal in the 800 meters, the half mile, and he's interviewed by the Russian press, and the first thing he says is, I believe gay people should be treated equally. Did they lock him up? <laughs> Not yet, but, you know, it's Wednesday at 3.10 uh, p.m. in New York. Uh, I think this is what will happen. I think all these athletes who are saying, uh, you know, we, we, we are there for sport, we can't be political. The IOC is saying you can't be political or we'll disqualify you from competing. Uh, the Russians are saying we're going to enforce the law no matter what. Uh, all of this is going to play out as there will be uh, overt mention of LGBT rights. If we go to Sochi. It's not out of the question to to well, uh, I certainly if agree. things get out of hand. I agree that if they were desperate enough, they could move the games. Go back to Vancouver. If uh, if Sochi blew up, they would find another place to but hold it, the games. I mean, every every week, every day, more ugliness about how the Russians feel about gay people and a lot of other things come I, I, out. They went to Beijing. They went to Korea. They went to. They go to a lot of places. And you asked at the top of the show, why do they go to these places? Because these places pay them a lot of money. I see. 
and because uh, they have this construct in their mind that they uh, they promote human rights by going to these places. Well, we don't want to make it all about the the, the Olympics here because it's not. But I mean, uh, there was a huge demonstration in London about this, yes. thousands of people, yes. and uh, among the speakers was Stephen Fry, who was made a bit of a name. His position is evolving on this about how it should be handled. A lot of people are evolving their positions. Me too. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, we said a couple of weeks ago, why don't they just wave some rainbow flags? But that's not enough in this case. That's true. I have evolved my position, too. Although I still want them to do that, but I want them to not be naive about it, and I want them to understand that the IOC is saying to them, you are not going to wave rainbow flags, you are not going to wear rainbow pins, you are not going to speak well, out, because the Olympics are a politics-free zone, and, and you can be disqualified if you do that. And they are making an equivalency to saying, what if a skinhead athlete wants to wear a swastika. Well, <laughs> thank you for that equivalency. There, there you are. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at a report from the London demonstration and hear what Stephen Fry had to say. Are you disappointed with David Cameron's response? No, not really. I hadn't expected that he would, <laughs> on the basis of a letter from someone like me, uh, use his influence over the over Team GB, such as it is, or over the IOC. And actually, I didn't call for a boycott exactly. I, I called for the event to be moved elsewhere, for the games to go ahead. But I don't think that's realistic either. I'm, I, I, you know, I do understand the way the world works. But I think it's incredibly important that the news gets out as to just how badly gay people are being treated in Russia. And I, my, my latest brain, brainchild is, is that uh, all the athletes who attend the Sochi uh, Olympiad next year um, show their solidarity and their, their disgust at the homophobia in Russia by uh, a simple gesture, just by putting their hands like that for a moment on the podium when they receive their medals or before they do their ski jump or whatever it is at any moment just a simple gesture they, they can't take that away they're not going to chop their arms off they may well confiscate any rainbow flags they may well deny visas to people like me who want to come and protest or, or Mr. Tatchell and others who have shown such courage over the recent years in attending pride marches but what they can't do is stop civilized decent ordinary people who care or indeed in fact don't care whether people are gay or straight I don't want the world to care, care whether I'm Gail Strait. I don't think it's I just don't think it's an important issue. Um, but what I do think is important is that the number of uh, people who are committing suicide in Russia, particularly teenagers, the corrective rape of lesbian girls goes completely unchallenged by police. Uh, it's becoming a really, really grim time to be gay in Russia. It's horrifying what's happening there, and and we want to show them that we are thinking of them and, and supporting them, and that. If Putin and his toxic mixture of shaven-headed neo-Nazis and uh, the newly powerful uh, Orthodox Church, which is now the sort of what the state used to be in, in the days of communism, it determines what it means to be Russian, it determines what it is that is pure and wholly Russian. Um, and being gay, they have decided, is not. And they are uncitizens. They are what the Germans used to call untermenschen, subhuman. Um, Fry, if I, and, sorry, if I can just interrupt you um, just for one second. Russia, of course, coming nasty. back. <laughs> sorry sure. to interrupt you there. Russia, of course, coming back, saying that it is not a homophobic no, no. state and saying that this new legislation in particular uh, is, uh, is actually a, relating to homosexual pra propaganda, rather, around children. Um, do you think there's any chance that Moscow, no, the Kremlin, they, Russia, a, has been misunderstood? That's what, they, that's what they've always said. I, no, no, I've, I've spent the last two years uh, making a program about homophobia around the world, which is due to come out on the BBC um, uh, later this year. And all uh, uh, homophobic regimes say this. They all say they do it for the children. They do it to stop children being propagandized at by gay people. Um, and that's not the situation at all. What they've done is they've unleashed the thugs who have done unspeakable things to teenagers, have lured them, beaten them, humiliated them, tortured them. Uh, this continues to be the case. Uh, lesbians are being raped, as I say, correctively, as, uh, as the horrible phrase is. The police are doing nothing about it. The fact that the law merely says that it is illegal to discuss uh, homosexuality as a normal practice to anybody under the age of 18 is a preposterous thing. There are, there are gay couples, in, I spoke to a, couple of, uh, les a lesbian couple who each had children from previous marriages but were living together. They, their two children were teens and they, they were breaking the law every day by demonstrating the normalcy of their relationship and that their two children were completely straight. Uh, the idea that just because you're a gay, gay couple, your children are going to grow up gay is ridiculous. You're born gay or you're not. And well, 
uh, good on uh, Stephen. Uh, Vitaly Milanov, who was the author of the law, branded Stephen Fry as sick. He said because of his bipolar disorder. He went on television and said this, but then the thing is they can't contain themselves. And he goes on to say, you know, homosexuality is just shame and sin. So that, that it's not just about children, it's about how they feel about gay people in general. Well, I also take a little issue with Stephen Fry for saying we must let them know we're thinking of them. I think we have to do a lot more than that. And this gesture across the uh, chest strikes well, me as a little too religious in its uh, connotations. I don't know if it's religious. He's just trying to come up with something. But anyway. I, and uh, we're all trying to do that. But really, there's got to be more done. And uh, uh, some victories that have happened. Here's one thing that I think is really important. As this worldwide outcry has happened, uh, and we do try to change the climate in Russia and get that law repealed, there are inevitable ripple effects that I think are magnificent. And one is that Armenia was set to pass a similar law. They were, uh, they had it all written. They were going to take it to the legislature and pass this. And they have canceled that because they see what is happening. Well, Masha, who's going to be our guest next week, said she was told when this thing was being worked on in Russia that it wasn't going to pass. It was just a lot of rumbling, as it was in Uganda and places like that. Uh, although Uganda's got bad Uga laws. Uganda has had its uh, kill the gays bill stalled yes. by the worldwide outcry. Right. Armenia has now canceled this law because of the worldwide outcry against Russia. Now, in terms of other developments, I mean, David Cameron this week did say we have to seriously consider asylum claims from uh, gay Russians, LGBT Russians at this point, and we obviously should be doing the same in the United States. And Canada has, uh, in Vancouver, they announced that they are seen more Russians show up uh, seeking asylum. So I think that is going to happen. And Russian activists are now calling on the U.S. to deny visas to Russian officials who are behind the law. Of course, that means all of them. Well, that's a, yeah, that's somewhat controversial because the U.S. has been so terrible for so many years about denying visas to people who are considered too liberal from places around the world. So to now support the idea of uh, withholding visas from anyone is uh, feels a little dicey. But uh, I just want to run down a number of uh, developments. All Out, the uh, international LGBT uh, um, sort of internet activist, delivered uh, over 300,000 signatures on a petition to the IOC in Switzerland. Uh, asking them to speak out against the law. They haven't really spoken out against the law. They want clarification on it. That's what they're saying. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I will give them credit for this. The, uh, that's they, what they go to Russia. Rogi, Rogi, is that yeah, his name? Rogi, that's, Rogi, Rogi, they, that's they, what he said. They go to but the he also Wait a minute. He also said, but we don't think it's a fundamental issue. <laughs> but they go to the Russians and they say, uh, we just want to check with you uh, to make sure everybody's going to be safe. Okay? Oh, yeah. And they say, oh, so they, the Russians give them an answer that starts with, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. But clearly, also says, but we'll enforce the right. law. And the IOC says, wait a minute, uh, uh, we need some clarification. But again, it's not going to be good enough if they just say they don't enforce it on the Olympic people. Absolutely it's got to be not. everybody. But they're not going to say that, clearly, <laughs> because they've said repeatedly the law will be enforced. Uh, I think they say that for their audience. And in reality, they may not enforce the law well, and, because that would be you know if uh, if Nikolai Alexeyev pulls off this the big uh, Russian gay activist uh, who has been on this show uh, pulls off his Sochi pride 2014 March which he wants to hold just before the start of the Olympics you know he's got them over a barrel if they let him hold it it's going to be a huge embarrassment to uh, Russia and if they try to shut it down he's going to bring some people out in the streets who are going to get beaten up and that's going to be it I talked to Peter Tatchell Peter Tatchell wants to go to a demonstration at Sochi if they do have the Olympics now uh, uh, Nikolai Alexeyev opposes a boycott of the Olympics but he endorsed a boycott of the Eurovision exactly, contest exactly so he's he's all it's, over the place uh, so are we. I want I want Obama to wear a rainbow pin to the G20 meeting in St. Petersburg in September. But closer to home, yes, is is NBC, the telecaster of the Olympics, going to protect its gay staffers? Well, I 
protect its gay staffers. This isn't just about gay <laughs> staffers. It's about everybody who might uh, be perceived as gay, be perceived as gay or pro-gay. So what happens? The executive vice president in charge of diversity at NBC in Burbank sends out a memo. I have a copy right here to all the NBC LGBT groups around the country, not to all the staff, just the LGBT groups say, I wanted to write you and address the recent news surrounding Russia's anti-gay laws and to reiterate NBC Universal's support for our LGBT employees. Uh, when I say, uh, you know, direct violation, uh, uh, we'll be sending hundreds of employees to Sochi. And They're the deeply troubled the by the uh, law. Please be assured that your security is paramount and we will do everything possible to protect the rights, safety, and well-being of our employees. But NBC has also said, in terms of coverage, that they're only going to cover it if it has an impact on the games. Well, on the games. They have done a few little moments of coverage so far. Today's but, show. But their coverage is basically cover about, up, not coverage. It is interviewing uh, athletes who are saying, "Don't boycott the games. We've trained so hard, so long to be able to do." Uh, a triple axle better than the next guy, and we have to protect that uh, over the human rights of the LGBT and other people. On of the Russia. other hand, our Senator Chuck Schumer, the great Chuck Schumer, has said we got to stand up to Putin. He's a schoolyard bully. Well, Chuck, we stood up to you when you voted for the Defense of Marriage <laughs> Act, went to your house twice in 1996 when you voted for that, and he didn't change his position for about 15 years. Uh, we yelled at him at every place he showed up in public for a long time. He says, He's against the boycott. Should, athletes should wave rainbow flags. Really? <laughs> yeah, really? Right. Be arrested? Be uh, deported? Why don't, you be... Wave a, why don't you wave a rainbow flag yeah. in Russia, Chuck? Yeah, exactly. Why don't uh, you go over there? Move on has taken on as it's... Take uh, John McCain with you. <laughs> A lot of people think Putin's gay, by the way. I got an email from a, a well, very well-connected viewer, who shall remain nameless, who says uh, that the security detail was always having a cover, were driving the crazy because he was seeing so many guys. Rumors, rumors. But we have no we're asking absolute for more information. truth. If and you, you know, know what? something. We don't want him. <laughs> Move On is campaigning to have American cities sever and uh, cities around the uh, world sever their sister city connections to Russian cities. That's their part of this. Uh, Stoli, which is still under attack as part of this uh, boycott Russian vodka thing and still trying to defend itself, has added a uh, sexual orientation non-discrimination clause to its employee rules in the English part of its <laughs> employee rules, not, not the Russian one. Now, we, we skipped over something about, about the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, because they're having a election for a new president now. Yeah. And there are about six candidates, and one of them is a guy named C.K. Wu, W-U, uh, from Taiwan, and he is pressing for written protections for uh, for the athletes and all that other kind of stuff. He's also saying we have to take this more into consideration. He says we are not joking with Russia. Well, let's see what that means. And he has suggested that future bids should be judged more strictly on human rights records. Well, there are six. It's, a, it's a, a, about time. There are six candidates for the IOC yep. presidency. It's going to be voted on before the end of this year. September 10th. Uh, one of the candidates is Sergey Brin, who was a, a big Russian athlete, and he is not in favor of any of those reforms. There's also a guy from Puerto Rico who's supposed to be very liberal. We'll keep an eye on well, that. Well, then you've got the FIFA situation, right? Uh, uh, this is, yes. This is the International uh, Soccer Federation, they call it football. Uh, Currently holding its uh, World Cup around the world, the qualifying tournaments. They, in fact, this tonight is for this, we, this is for 2014, 14. and then Russia has it in 2018. But they are asking, they're raising questions about going to Russia now in 2018 because uh, they've got some lead time. Well, they want to know uh, how it's going to be enforced during events. That's all they seem to be concerned about. The sports minister uh, of, of Russia is on FIFA's 27-member executive committee. And the, 20, sure. and the 22, 2022 World Cup is set for Qatar, where homosexual acts are illegal, which is even worse than Russia. Well, we're getting loud about all these things in all these places. We raised and... the thing about Qatar. Yes, uh, uh, we've talked we about win. it here. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, but they're whole in uh, uh, Belfast, Northern Ireland tonight. They're holding a demonstration downtown as the Northern Ireland team soccer team is playing the Russian team in a qualifying match for the 2014 and World Cup. San Francisco's got one tonight and the Palm Springs Pride has named Sochi Pride, this is a Sochi Pride, as Grand Marshal of their parade. Well, this is Alexeyev's march, the Sochi okay. Pride 2014, has been named as uh, the Grand Marshal of, uh, uh, of the Greater Palm Springs Pride Parade. I, <laughs> we were sitting around in our Queer Nation Organizing Committee meeting the other night, and people were saying, really? Uh, <laughs> could we have the uh, uh, Boson Hicks? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Name the Grand Marshal of the New York Parade. I said, no, I want uh, work expands to fit the time available. <laughs> Name the Grand Marshal. Okay. Anyway, I, I've still got a list of things. Um, in California, there is a Senate re resolution to have no more pension funds invested in Russia. The L.A. City Council wants more asylum offers. Uh, the LGBT community in the Netherlands is asking the Dutch Olympic team to protest by wearing and rainbow flags. And an Antwerp flags. 300 protested at the Russian consulate with a kiss in. Uh, there is a demonstration this Saturday, uh, the 17th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the headquarters of the McDonald's Corporation in Oak Brook, Illinois, because we're going after the Olympic sponsors and those U.S. businesses doing huge business in Russia, and McDonald's is one of the biggest, and they need to stand up and use their economic leverage in Russia to get this law repealed. As and that is the, I think that is the real lever, is the U.S. corporations so heavily invested in Russia. Well, Coke, you, you, McDonald's, you, You're talking Boeing. about U.S. corporations, but these are multinational corporations Yes, they now. are. Procter & Gamble is the biggest advertiser on Russian TV. Yes. And when you advertise on Russian TV, the money goes into Putin's pocket. You bet. Because it's state run for the most part. And John Becker of uh, Bilirico has Bilerico. Uh, Bilerico, which is a gay site, is urging Procter and Gamble to stop advertising because of that. Uh, and there's, and there's be, a Change.org petition about that. That's going to be delivered to PNG headquarters in Cincinnati next week, and there's going to be a demonstration there around that. And uh, we're going after Coke, and we're going after PNG, and we're going after. Uh, Visa and Samsung and Panasonic and all these major uh, uh, companies invested in either the Olympics or Russia or both. Whew. Um, the uh, uh, Human Rights Watch is getting up to speed on this. They're uh, attacking uh, the IOC and sponsors and governments that failed to stop these laws getting passed in the first place. Uh, oh, here's my... <laughs> favorite. The American Kennel Club has uh, the 2016 World Dog Show scheduled in Russia. The dog show world is a very gay place. All you have to do is watch the uh, Westminster Dog Show at uh, Madison Square Garden every year. And they are up in arms about this. And they want the World Dog Show moved out of Russia. They say that the homophobic laws fly in the face of the ideals of the human canine world, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which, no, let's are, not laugh. which are People... unconditional love. There you go. That is the basis of there this. There you go. And uh, they have already canceled uh, the November, the feature piece on Russia in the November international issue of Dogs in Review. They are on board. I think that's fantastic. The Russian LGBT activist Alexei Davidov uh, says that uh, protest in Sochi is not enough. And he says, uh, well, I, as I said, he said they should put people on this ban list uh, for visas. All these people are behind the law. Uh, and oh, and uh, some people wonder where this came from. Uh, we've discovered that the authors of the uh, bad law in Russia attended an ultra-right-wing conference in Paris, met up with uh, the people like Scott Lively the, uh, and, uh, and the American Family Association. Was the Vatican there? All of, well, I don't They're know. still being nice to us. They're well, not nice, of uh, course. But it is a lot of uh, U.S. Uh, right-wing evangelists who are behind a lot of this. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Weir's getting a little more serious. I'm yeah. prepared to be arrested. Uh, no, you're not, Johnny. I don't think so. Uh, Big demo in Tel Aviv. 
Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, there, uh, Lansing, Michigan City Council uh, ended its sister city relationship with St. Petersburg. We are having a big meeting tonight, uh, so you're not going to get to it because you're not going to see this in time. Uh, here in New York at the LGBT Center, we told you about it last week, to begin to broaden this out to a big activist group. We're going to have another meeting next week on Wednesday night on the 21st at 7 p.m. at the LGBT Center in New York, 208 West 13th Street. Uh, and if you want information about all of this, the meetings, the, uh, the law, the protests, Go to QueerNationNY.org. We're assembling a lot of information there. Now, Anne, I know you're you're, you're chairing the meeting tonight. You're yes. going to be that. You're going to be so. I mean, you're going to have to be neutral. But uh, wh I mean, you <laughs> you can see how neutral you, I am. You've read a lot about this. I have. Uh, what do you think is going to make the most difference for the people on the ground in Russia? I hear a lot of Russians are coming to this meeting tonight. Uh, Fifty or sixty, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll hear what they have to say. Uh, they have. Uh, LGBT people in Russia have already spoken up in gratitude to people around the world who are raising this and giving them hope and making them understand that they are not isolated. Just speaking up is huge, but actual leverage, I think, is going to come from these corporations. I think it's economic leverage. And uh, anything that, uh, well, I was going to say humiliates Putin, but uh, he tends not to... Be well, he's, humiliated he's too obviously easily. calculated this is going to make him stronger. Yes, with any eighty-seven percent of the people there, seventy-four percent support this, the law. Mm -hmm. uh, eighty-seven percent say they don't want a pride parade in their city. Scott's. Five five percent say they would like us liquidated. You know, Scott Long, killed. Scott Long, the uh, longtime international activist, controversial, uh, but he had a long piece on this that was quite interesting at Paper uh, Dash Bird. Dot something, And he says that one of the really key things is we've got to stop the skinhead videos uh, where they're luring uh, gay kids uh, and beating them up and then displaying it. Uh, Doesn't online. it identify them as the perpetrators that, so that they can be arrested? The, uh, the Russian security has no interest in going after the perpetrators. That's one of the problems. But the uh, universal uh, image that's being put out of uh, that it's okay to beat up perverts has got to be stopped. So he wants us to somehow get this offline, this VK.com, yeah. where these are being put up, he thinks right. is key. We've got a lot to run through. We've got All about right. 20 minutes. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's go back to the United States. Okay. Well, uh, in developments this week, uh, the Department of Defense announced that it's uh, going to, uh, it's worked out how it's going to give uh, spousal benefits to uh, uh, people in the military, uh, and including 10 days off to go get married somewhere else. Well, there's good and bad in this. Because if you need at, to. At first, we thought they were going to uh, acknowledge domestic partners and uh, people in civil unions to give benefits to. Uh, they've decided to restrict it to people who are legally married and make it fully equivalent to heterosexual married couples. But they are giving, saying to people uh, who are in the military, who are stationed in places that do not allow same-sex marriage, we'll give you 10 days to go to a state, one of the 13 states or the District of Columbia, or I guess another country where uh, same-sex marriage is legal, get married, come back to wherever you are, and we will acknowledge your marriage and give you the benefits. Right. But you have to be married. Uh, it's back to your argument about domestic partnerships, but now we don't the, have time to do now that Now the today. Social Security Administration uh, has announced that it's uh, limiting the claims of same-sex married couples to, for the time being to states that recognize same-sex marriage. They are processing claims for your benefits. Cl your claim will be put on hold, though. Uh, and if you live in a state that does not recognize and we should know marriage. that you should know that the federal government for purposes of citizenship and immigration looks at uh, where the marriage took place so if you're married you're married anywhere and the office of personnel management has extended health benefits to all same-sex marriages no matter where you live the labor department says same-sex married couples are eligible for family and medical leave uh, you that's leave that's unpaid but your job is guaranteed at the same uh, spot uh, in the Social Security Administration uh, consideration, they're calling uh, this uh, the section where they talk about same-sex married 
couples. Uh, the Windsor same-sex marriage claims. Let's see, after our more, friend Edie Windsor. More immortality. In Rhode Island, the judge Edie. will not issue an injunction versus the marriage law that took effect August 1st. A religious nut there had argued that the law conflicts with the religious protections in the state constitution and contones behavior primary to what the framers intended. <laughs> Minnesota has announced a little twist that is an attempt to get people to come there to get married now that it's legal for same-sex couples to marry there. It is often the case that if you marry someplace like that and then you live somewhere else, if you decide you want to be divorced, it's tough because these states often have like year-long residency requirements is for divorce. Is it going to be the Las Vegas of gay divorce? Yes, because Minnesota has announced that people who marry there in same-sex uh, marriages but live in non-marriage states can divorce in Minnesota without fulfilling the residency requirement. Well, that's how Reno got a lot of uh, divorces well, in the old days. Well, they have a six-week residency yeah. requirement. You've seen those the, movies. I saw the women. Yeah. In Pennsylvania and Montgomery County, they have now issued more than 100 licenses to, uh, same, to same-sex couples to get married. It's unclear if the validity will be upheld, a legal challenge from Governor Tom Corbett. Oh, we'll see. Uh, there is no legal right to same-sex marriage in Pennsylvania we'll at see. the moment. I, I wish nothing but for them to be legal, but they all know perfectly well that they're uh, uh, taking a chance and they're being good renegades. And we're concerned about what's going on, or a lot of groups are concerned about what's going on in Florida and Arizona, where ballot initiatives are being mounted to legalize same-sex marriage. Behind them is a guy named Tim Mooney, who's a Republican strategist who had worked on Utah's anti-gay marriage amendment in 2004 and helped elect Rick Perry. Uh, they think he's maybe doing this just to make money. He claims he's had a change of heart, but there I, I have yet to see the text of these uh, proposed marriage amendments. There are some who say that it gets it's not going to end up in marriage, and it's really to bolster religious freedom claims. In Iowa, the Ethics and Campaign Disclosure Board will investigate the National Organization for Marriage at the behest of Fred Carger. Uh, for not disclosing donor names uh, during the campaigns of uh, against the Supreme Court justices who legalized same-sex marriage there. Uh, and in, in, are we done with marriage news? Or you... uh, South Carolina announced that it's putting together a new effort to start to explore legal options for same-sex marriage and uh, build support around the state. They're not as far as actually putting a proposed law together. Well, but they don't they're... want to be like Russia, do they? <laughs> They're working on That's it. That's the way to get them. They are beginning to work now, on it. Now, in North Carolina, which has had a huge turn to the right, uh, sadly, uh, the University of North Carolina system has banned gender-inclusive housing. Uh, that, that, that Chapel Hill University, University of North Carolina, had enacted last spring, and it means you can't assign members of the opposite sex to dorms, campus apartments, uh, unless students are siblings, parents, and child were legally married. Of course, what does that do for same-sex couples? Uh, but anyway, campus lets them live together. Exactly. <laughs> but this, but it's very bad for transgenders. Very. And that's why campus and pride was against it, and they weren't allowed to testify against it. It's also bad for gay students in general because uh, they often want to live in uh, mixed-gender dorms because yeah. in single-sex dorms they tend to be targeted gay men. I think uh, yeah. particularly. Uh, on the other hand, Boston University of all places has approved uh, student choice that includes gender-inclusive uh, housing. And uh, staying with Minnesota, uh, there's a transgender, uh, we up there on the list there? Yeah. yeah. A transgender candidate, we have a picture of her, Paula Overby of Egan, Minnesota. She's running for Congress in the 2nd District. She's the first out transgender candidate for Congress there in Minnesota. We do have a picture, picture of her. Of her. Are we Paula gonna show Overby, her? male to MTF, male yeah. to female. Transgender right, character, that's a little, maybe uh, not. A little too quick for the control All right, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, Rod Snyder, the retiring president of the Young Democrats of America, uh, has come out as he is retiring. He's come out as West Virginian, Christian, and gay. Uh, the internal conflict that I experienced in total isolation for so many years is over now. He's in his 30s. He was the head of the Young Democrats. I mean, I know a lot of people are still in the closet, maybe the majority of LGBT people, but 
really. It, it's okay. Come in. The water's fine. Well, there's problems still out there. In Marble Grove, Minnesota, a 45-year-old man va vandalized Pilgrim's United Church, writing anti-gay messages uh, and Bible verses on the building. It had been going on for months, so the church installed a camera <laughs> and caught the guy. Uh, when apprehended, he said, any church that recognized gay marriage is a cult. <laughs> so... Yeah, they're looking for a little camera footage in Chelsea of a gay bashing uh, here this week. On uh, our block. Yeah. <laughs> right on the corner of 24th Street and uh, 9th Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to the west of 9th Avenue there, there was a gay bashing last night. Uh, two gay men were bashed by a group. And, uh, of young be, men. There'll be more information on that later. As we discover it. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham is getting a little ba gay bashed in uh, South Carolina by his Tea Party and, uh, opponents in a primary. Uh, one of his opponents is Nancy Mace, and one of her supporters said this was a race between Nancy Mace and Nancy Boy Graham. But evidently this has been happening for years, yes. and as long as it's just at this level, no one he cares. He denies it. Well... And the American Bar Association has voted to uh, urge legislatures to deny uh, uh, the gay panic defense and trans panic defenses, which uh, California has done for several years. Yep. Mm, okay. Governor Jerry Brown has signed the School Success and Opportunity Act in California, which allows transgender students in schools who already had a non-discrimination law, but this reinforces their access to all programs, activities, facilities, uh, and just sort of ups the uh, protections And they've there. also advanced in the assembly the Youth Equality Act, which uh, would eliminate state tax breaks or tax exemptions for groups that discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, or religious affiliation. It needs a two-thirds vote when it gets to the assembly. It's already passed two-thirds, and the Senate is the first LGBT bill to get a two-thirds vote. Uh, that It got that in June in the Senate. Um, now, I have to say, you know, I have some concerns about, you know, uh, basing tax exemption on your views. I mean, uh, that, that could be used against us in other times. Uh, in Although fact, maybe if they got rid of all tax exemptions. I'm for that, too. Yes. I am for that, too. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is going to be presented to astronaut Sally Ride, who came out publicly after she died, and the late Bayard Rustin, the out gay lead organizer of the 1963 March for, in Washington, for jobs and freedom, whether I, I have a dream speech. The 50th anniversary of that march is going to take place in Washington on Saturday, August 24th. But they had a memorial concert at the King Memorial on Saturday, August 10th. And they were supposed to, at the last minute, they added gospel singer Donnie McClurkin, who's very anti-gay, who said God delivered him from the sin of homosexuality. So some gay activists got involved, and the mayor said, let's not do this, and he withdrew. Well, he withdrew, but now he's whining about it. Oh, let him. And claiming that the mayor dissed him and owes him an apology and, uh, you know, is being mean to him just because, and that he's not a homophobe. <laughs> well, my old friend Bill Lynch was not a homophobe. He was very pro-gay. He was a deputy mayor of New York. I worked for him for many years, and he passed away, passed away this past uh, um, uh, Friday. I, I, you know... Uh, I lost track of Bill for a while in between in my life, and, and uh, whenever he would meet gay activists, he would say, oh, uh, do you know Andy Hum? And uh, they'd say, oh, yeah, Andy, the gay activist does that show. He goes, I'm his lover. <laughs> And then, th then they would, then they would do what Anne is doing. They'd laugh, and he would say, "Oh, you're one of those racist gays." I mean, he'd do this very seriously. Uh, who thinks I couldn't? Oh, I understand. And he'd walk away. Good for him. I loved him. Yes, uh, big loss. Uh... Uh, and uh, another uh, late gay activist, uh, John Boswell, his uh, book, Same-Sex Unions in Pre-Modern Europe, which talks all about uh, how the Catholic Church was performing same-sex ceremonies of union in, uh, uh, you know, pre-Christian marriage times, uh, available as an e-book now. Good. Same-sex unions in pre-modern Europe, John Boswell. Pre-modern, not pre-Christian, pre-modern. Pre-modern yes. Europe. Yes, it wasn't the Catholic Church then, it was just the church. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Alachua County in Florida, that's Gainesville, has adopted a sexual orientation and gender identity and expression non-discrimination law for the whole county. Gainesville has had one for a while. 
And San Antonio is considering a sexual orientation non-discrimination act. <laughs> now with the support of Pastor John Hagee of the Cornerstone Church, he withdrew his opposition to it uh, when he says they, uh, they amended it a little to, to not uh, punish people who had discriminated by word. <laughs> So we're making progress. Yes, because we believe in free speech. Yeah, uh, but New York Assembly uh, member Micah Kellner is, has now been charged with sexually harassing a male staffer. Uh, and yep. the staffer complained about sexual harassment and says his job was affected and he was forced to quit and yeah. it's ugly. And B. Scott... Micah was the first out bisexual in the state assembly. Right. B. Scott, who we told you about, had a run-in with BET Network, is now suing them for discrimination. They put him on the red carpet for uh, their big annual awards event and, uh, and then yanked him after his first interview and told him he had to tone down his makeup and take yeah, off his yep, heels and do all that. Well, he's suing them now. Okay. Good for Good. him. All right, all right, international news. Yes, in Mexi other than Russia. In Mexico, in the Yucatan, the male couple that uh, got a federal injunction last month allowing them to get married, got married. They were the first to marry there. And our new U.S. ambassador to Australia, John Barry, former head of the Office of Personnel We have Management, a picture of him, John Barry. Marrying his longtime, 17-year partner, Curtis Yee. They are going to Australia as a married couple where they will not be recognized as a married well, couple. Well, the new Labor Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, if elected, said he will bring the same-sex marriage bill within the first 100 days. The conservative uh, uh, candidate, Tony Abbott, is resisting a conscience vote on it. The election is on uh, September 7th. Yeah, well, we'll keep you apprised of that. Uh, uh, ter and terrible story in Haiti. Uh, where a gay British man was attacked by locals with rocks and homemade bombs as he celebrated his engagement to his partner there. A mob attacked him. At the last minute, the police intervened and prevented them from getting killed. The guy is a British, uh, he's a Red Cross worker, and he won't speak out about the thing because he's fearing reprisals for his Haitian partner. And it turns out that it's gotten much worse there after the 210 earthquake because people thought that was the wrath of God that gays brought down. And because you're in a situation with economic uh, horror and and deprivation as in Russia and we become the scapegoats yeah and in France uh, someone developed a hashtag that translates gays must disappear and die because and it's got 10,000 hits mm -hmm. and they want it they're, they're, they're suing over this Idaho is suing over the International Day Against Homophobia is suing Twitter over this uh, good news from Peru where a nightclub has been fined for refusing entry to a transgender woman and uh, the nightclub has been ordered to give an apology, train their staff, uh, put a statement on their website and their storefront. AIDS news. AIDS news. Hey, right. meningitis, which we got you all worked up about. The outbreak Done. in New in New York <laughs> has been contained because a lot of people got vaccinated. Exactly. Good for you who Excellent. got vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, ACT UP this week is holding a demonstration at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Health because the prevention funding has been cut. They're not doing public education campaigns on pre or post exposure prophylaxis. They're just totally, uh, you know, uh, down on the job. And uh, you can stop meningitis. Let's uh, let's do a little more prevention work on HIV. And there was an article in, in the journal LGBT Health by Sean Cahill and Dr. Harvey Macadon from the Fenway Institute in Boston. It says that recording sexual orientation and gender identity in health records would greatly facilitate identifying unique health needs and disparities of LGBT people and improve outcomes. And they note the Obama administration, Obama administration has been very good about this, or pretty good about this. And uh, yeah. Yeah, they're working there are on some it. security issues, but it, it's really important for people to ask about it. Yeah. And there's a new AIDS drug. Uh, Tivike? Yep. By GlaxoSmithKline. It's an integrase inhibitor, uh, just a new option for people who are, for whom the older drugs are not working. It's been approved by the FDA. Uh, the story this week is making the news about a gay mayor in California who uh, started a blood drive but then was refused uh, the, uh, the ability to donate blood, and everybody seems very shocked by this. Well, uh, yeah, that's the rule, and yeah, we've got to get rid of it. 
And we mourn the death of Sean Sasser yes. at age 44, uh, who became famous on The Real World on MTV in his relationship with Pedro Zamora. This is his partner. Who died in 1994. Uh, Sean died of mesothelioma, uh, lung cancer, linked uh, often to a weakened immune system. Everybody loved him. All right. Uh, you got some London theater reviews? I do, and we don't have too much time, so I'll just tell you you can go to our website, gayusatv.org. You've got three minutes. Where Bill has posted them, but I do want to tell you about some of these places because a lot of them are going to be coming to the United States, I'm sure. There's a new one by Connor McPherson. we got a picture of it here with Kieran Hines uh, at the uh, Don Mar Warehouse. It's called The Night Alive. He's the best, you know, the best things I saw over there were Irish, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's a great ensemble about down and out people, but he really humanizes them. He doesn't patronize them, and that's what's great about that play. Called again? The Night Alive. Thank and it you. was directed by Connor McPherson. The second one is also Irish by uh, Martin McDonough, part of the Michael Grandage season. Uh, it stars Daniel Radcliffe there on the right, and that's uh, Peter Short playing Johnny Patine Mike. Now, we saw this in you, the United States about 10 years ago. You have not given them the name, The however. Cripple of Inishman, and that's Radcliffe playing Cripple Billy, and it's so funny and trenchant and hard. It's, it, you know, so, I, the Irish are sentimentalized so much, and that's what he's playing against, and it gives it, a, gives it a really hard edge. The next one I saw is a play called Leola by Luigi Pirandello. Oh, I've heard of him. I was going to say, <laughs> have you ever heard of the play? No. And is Leola a boy or a girl? It's I'm a guy. Guess. Oh yeah, okay. It's a guy. Uh, I, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's one of his rare comedies, and it's really about more about the women. It's about it's about the way women are oppressed in, in their roles and things like that. And it's at the National Theater at the Littleton, and it's running till November sixth. The next one I saw was called Same Deep Water as Me by Nick Payne at the Don Mar. It's about personal injury law. How many times does he a play about that? And it starts out as I like that it idea. starts out as kind of a comedy. Yeah. And then a lot of the people who are playing the litigants and the and the false claims and things like that, yeah. they they they, be, they they take different roles in the courtroom scene in the next ah. scene. It's really well done. Uh, um, just highly recommend that at the Don Mar. The next one up is Othello. And this one you can see in a local theater near you, no matter where you, almost no matter where you live in this country, because it's part of that national theater live thing. Mm -hmm. This is starring Rory Kinnear over there on the left as Iago and uh, Adrian Lester as um, Othello. Othello himself. And it's one of the clearest productions of the play you're ever going to see, and you can catch that on film. The next one up is called The Amen Corner by James Baldwin. Had you heard of it before? No, I don't think so. He, he wrote a play right after he wrote his first novel. Ah. Even though his agent said, don't write a play, write magazine articles. We can make money. <laughs> and uh, so he writes a play about his church roots. And uh -huh. it's about a very strong woman there, Marianne Jean-Baptiste, uh -huh. who you may remember from some of the Mike Lee films. She's terrific. It's, you know, it's about dealing with racism, basically, uh -huh. and how hard you have to be sometimes in order to do it. I saw Private Lives with Noel, by Noel Coward with Toby Stevens and Anna Chancellor. Perfect casting. I saw Sweet Bird of Youth by Tennessee Williams with Kim Cattrall of Sex and the City and Seth Numerick uh, there, looking very uh, sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, that's a mess of a play, a very good production at the Old Vic. And I finally saw Merrily We Roll Along by Stephen Sondheim, which I hope comes here from the Don Mar. Beautiful music, a little bit of a stereotype in the casting. I mean, not at the casting, in the, in the script.